This is a lecture on the properties of exponents. And if you remember, exponents condense repeated multiplication. So when multiplication is repeated, such as x times x times x, with the same value, we can condense that to x cubed. And what we need to represent this with is expanded notation. And then this is exponential nota notation. So if we look at the first rule, it's called the product rule. And what we're going to do is we're going to expand this problem out. So that just means instead of writing x squared, I'm going to write x times x. And now I want to condense this into exponential form. My base is x. It's multiplied by itself three times. In the next problem, I have y to the fifth. So I'm going to expand. That means five y's are being multiplied by each other times an additional three y's. And from my expanded form into my exponential, my base is y. It's multiplied by itself a total of eight times. So if you look at a general pattern, we are adding the exponents. When the base is the same, what we've done here is we've taken a 1 and a 2 and made a 3. A 5 and a 3 adds to 8. You never have to memorize that rule if you just know to expand. We'll try the next one through expansion. x squared is cubed. So this quantity is written three times. So I'm expanding the x squared three times. And if I further expand, each of these is representing two x's times itself. So if I look at the total, there are six being multiplied by themselves. In the next problem, we do the same three. Three x to the fourth times three x to the fourth. Multiply my numbers. Looking at my x's, there are a total of eight being multiplied by each other. And the last problem says that I have a cubed over b squared, this item times itself two times. And so here they are. So if I look at my numerator and this multiply sign, I've got three from the first fraction times three more. In the denominator, I have two from the first fraction times two from the second fraction. Totaling these up, there are six a's being multiplied and four b's. So this is the simplification of that exponent. So when we take a look here, if we're looking for a pattern, I can see I have a 2 and a 3 next to each other, and they made 6. I have a 4 and a 2 next to each other, and they made 8. So in this case, 4 times 2 is 8. 3 times 2 is 6. So here we actually end up multiplying the exponents. But again, you never have to memorize that property if you go ahead and use your expansion. The quotient rule, quotient means division. Again, I'm going to expand three x's in the numerator and a single x in the denominator. And if we use our division rule of fractions, if the numerator and denominator match, they reduce to a 1. So I simply have x squared left. And I like to think of this as I have three x's in the numerator, being the x cubed. I have one left in the denominator. They all cancel, leaving me two in the numerator x to the seventh, so expanding, writing seven x's, x to the fourth, again expanding, writing four x's, x divided by x is one, x divided by x is one, and so forth all the way down until I have three left, x cubed. Again, they're left in the numerator, seven and four will reduce, seven in the top will cancel the four in the bottom. And in the last problem, I have three in the numerator, I have four in the denominator, an x cancels an x, I'm left with one, but notice where it's at, it's in the denominator. So when I look at this rule and try to generalize it, we always want to envision a one there, three minus one is two, seven minus four is three. So it looks like we subtract the exponents. In this case, 3 minus 4. 3 minus 4 
is that negative one exponent, which tells me that it lands in the denominator. Okay, in order to do the next negative exponent rule, which we've talked about before, and looking at place value. If you recall that place value, this negative was the place of one-tenth, and this was the place of zero, one, two. This was one one-hundredth. And so when I convert this, following the pattern, 2, 1, 0, this would be a negative 1, 10 to the negative 1, and this would be 10 to the negative 2, and so forth. Remember that negative means it's going to drop below that divide. So here's a negative. All that means is it's going to drop below the divide bar and become x squared. Notice this is in the denominator. This negative 2 says, you know what? It's in the wrong location. It now needs to come to the surface or come to the numerator. And the power of 0, as explained earlier in the introduction, the power of 0 is in the 1's position. So anything to the 0 power is 1, no matter if it's a value, a variable, or a mixture of the two.